Hello, Pastor Darlene here with another episode of Children Worship and Wonder with a wonderful story today. I can't wait to tell it with you. But we begin, as always, by lighting our Christ candle. Whoops. Third time. Woo! We remember by this Christ candle that Jesus is the light of the world and the darkness will not overcome that light. And down here we have a second story that illustrates the nickname of Jesus. It's Jesus as our good shepherd. And he's got that little lost sheep over his shoulders, bringing him home into the sheepfold where we want as many sheep as possible in there because it's a parable story. And we like to think of ourselves as those sheep. And we think God wants everybody in that sheepfold. And here we have how the church tells time. We are moving on through the season of ordinary time right there, going towards the season of Advent. And we have our nativity out that we leave out all year long because the birth of Jesus was so important. And as I move to the table and get ready to collect our offering for the day, God has given us so many blessings that we need to give something back to God and to the church. And so even, even in the adult services, they collect offerings. Sometimes it's called a tithe. We collect things like money or maybe a drawing of something that you want to thank God for or a picture or a prayer of something that you will do for God this week. So I hope you're filling up your bowl or your box at home with offerings for God. Today's story is one of my favorites. I know I say that about a lot of the stories, but I love this story. This story is one that will stay with you your whole life. It's such a comforting story story. So we'll begin in our desert box. Inside of this box is a small piece of the desert. So many important things happen in the desert that we need a small piece of it in our worship center. The desert is a strange and wild place. At night, it's very cold, but in the daytime, it is burning hot. There's almost no water at all. And the desert is always changing because as the wind comes, it shapes and it molds the sand. So the desert is never the same. Our story today begins with the characters of Abram and Sarai, which I need to go get from another story. Just one moment. I'll be right back. Here we go. Here are Abram and Sarai. And they live in the beautiful city of Haran. The one true God loved Abram and Sarai. But one day, God told them, Move from your home. I will give you a new home and a new land. It's all right to go. I will be with you. And I will bless you. Well... They wondered if they would be safe. They looked across the desert and they thought, 
It would be so sad to leave their home and their friends. Would they be safe? Would God be with them? But they went. They trusted the one true God to show them the way. They came to the land of Shechem. It was in the land of Canaan. God had been with them in Haran. But would God be here too? And God spoke to them and said, Look, look at this land. I will give this land to your children. And Abram and Sarai were so happy that God was with them that they couldn't help but give thanks. So they built a special place called an altar and they prayed their thanks to God and then they moved on. They moved on to a place called Bethel. And God was there too. Abram and Sarai were so happy that again they built an altar and they prayed their thanks to God. That just doesn't want to stay up there. Then there came a great famine, so there was not enough food to eat, and they were very hungry. Abram and Sarai moved to the land of Egypt. Abram was scared. He was scared of the people in Egypt and he forgot that God promised to be with him. But God did not forget. God kept his promise to Abram and Sarai and he kept them safe. The Egyptians were good to them and they gave them food and animals. So Abram and Sarai moved back to the land of Canaan, the land that God promised to give them, to a place called Hebron. Abram and Sarai wondered if God would be here too. God had been with them in Haran and in Shechem and in Bethel. God had even been with them in Egypt. But would God be here too? And God said to them, I will give you many children to live in this land. Abram and Sarai were so happy that God was with them that they couldn't help but build an altar and give thanks to God. So once again, they built their altar and they prayed their thanks and God blessed them. And today, that same God who was with them in every place and in every time is with us too. God promised to be with Abram and Sarai, and God promises to be with us. I wonder if you've ever moved from a different house to another house, or a city to another city, or even further to a different state in the United States, 
for a different country. If you've had that experience, you know that God is with you in every place and time. But I want you to know that doesn't just mean in the places that you've been, but also for the places that you will go. So maybe you're in elementary school right now, but God will be with you in middle school or junior high school, high school, college, no matter where you go in this world, wherever you live, God will be with you too. And isn't that a comforting message? It's why I love this story so much. Here I am, uh, 56 years old, and I can look back over my life and see how God has been with me in every time and place, even times when I wasn't very close to God. God never left me, and God is certainly going to be with me wherever else I go. I hope you find that comforting too. And as I put away our story, I hope that you will maybe take a pause and enjoy your feast time with your family. Maybe look up this story in your Bible because it is in, let's see, which chapters? Let me look that up. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. I know we're still in the book of Genesis. So this story is in Genesis chapters 12 and 13. So let me look at what the headings, the titles say above both of those. Genesis, and remember that the Chapter numbers are the great big numbers. They'll be bigger than all the rest of the ones. So it says in chapter 12, it starts with the call of Abram. And then the next section, still in chapter 12, is Abram and Sarai in Egypt. And then, this doesn't want to turn, it continues... Uh, into chapter 13, Abram and Lot separate. And eventually, if you kept reading, you would find that this is one of the characters in the Bible where God changes their names. He changes the names of Abram and Sarai to Abraham and Sarah. Isn't that interesting? Oh. There's not uh, that many characters in the Bible where God changes their name, but every time that happens, something really gigantic has helped, happened to those characters. So uh, he feels like they need a new name. Okay, we are going to start with the last of our smartphone prayers today. So get your parents and have them get on their phone and there are different social media apps like Facebook or Instagram or uh, Messenger Kids or Pinterest even. Go on to one of those, whatever is your favorite, and just scroll through and look for things that you might pray about. Look right here, Facebook. Today while I've been filming, Miss Angela and her daughter Abby have been in the two nursery rooms, cleaning and putting out new toys, assembling things. And so she has a post about that. And I just thank goodness for all of their hard work that is going into making our nurseries a safe and clean place for our kids when we do get to get back together. And I have a friend, a church friend, who needs prayers for her daughter. I have another friend that is celebrating an anniversary. I have, oh, oh, how cute. There's a picture from a clergy friend who has a home communion tray that is a box of donuts 
with the tiny little communion cup in the middle. <laughs> so how would you like to have that for your feast time? Donuts and little grape juice. And then if, as there's a post from a, a friend here at church, Sean Lovejoy, that has a picture of his dog adoring a photo of a tennis ball. <laughs> I can imagine a dog being in love with a tennis ball. It likes it so much to play with that. So have fun scrolling through whatever, which, what, whichever app that your family picks and just thinking about who that person is or how could you pray and, and bring that person into the presence of God with your prayer. I know that you have friends that would love to have your prayer. That's all for this week. I will see you again next Sunday, and I hope you have a fun week counting all of your blessings. I'll see you again soon.